When most people think of a caravan, they think of it as something that they vacation in. After all, it's a metal box. It's not a place that a lot of people would want to live in full time. But this next place we're about to visit, the owner has done something truly remarkable to transform this caravan into a wonderful, comfortable home. I'm very excited to show you this one. Hey, Cortland. Hey there. Nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you too, yeah. Now this is your home, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like nothing from the outside, but it's what you could do with a very small capital. Everything's recycled and found in it. I only spent $1,000. How did you actually come here to be on this property? This is a really beautiful place we're in right now. The place that I was living, I was collecting pieces of wood that I collect in the forest. My landlord didn't like how much I was collecting. Basically, he uh, gave me a 10-day eviction notice. And so I had to get everything off the property and also find a house. And so I already cleaned out this trailer and I just went to work for 10 days. Uh, my dad came out for a day or two and we just completed a new house for myself. And what happened was Caleb, who I met a year ago, I didn't have a place to park this and he invited me to this property. And the nice thing is for most of my time, I don't really like being in a house and, and I actually like like being outside and so I get to explore the creeks and the, the forest and eat lunch by the trees and that's where I spend most of my time and I sleep and cook and write and hear. And what an absolutely incredible place to be able to do all of those things. <laughs> but the reason you're collecting all of these materials is actually because you're a natural builder, aren't you? My passion for nature and I went to school for visual art sort of all merged together into like uh, natural building and really making creative homes that aren't just aren't just houses but actual like art pieces that people can live in through really living in a space you're actually like sculpted by the environment the the sculpted environment I feel actually influences the way we present ourselves in the world it's like a second skin in a certain way and so you want to grow into your second skin and like really put intention into it so that you're becoming your house in a certain way. And by putting that intention, you can actually find a new way of uh, being in the world, I guess. I absolutely love that philosophy. I could not agree with you more about that. And that just makes me really, really eager to see inside right. and see what you've done. No way! <laughs> I was not expecting this. This is incredible! Yeah, there's a little bit of a disguise on the outside. The inside is, yeah, again, like I said, this is where I just put, put my energy. Everything is just done so beautifully, and I'm such a fan of this incredible woodwork. Is that hiding a, a water bottle? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so it looks like it's coming out of the stump almost. This is a little piece of bamboo that, um, if I need to get water over here from a bigger gallon, I can do that. Yeah. The smell in here is just, it's filled with that really lovely wood scent, isn't it? Yeah, I, I left all the wood natural using edible finishes actually, so it's like completely natural finishes. I left all the cedar raw so that it really actually like absorbs any toxins and it can also like purify the air and prevent any pests or mold. So this was all just made out of bits of wood that you found? Yeah, I mean, they're all reclaimed things, um, some reclaimed things I bought, but yeah, basically walking in the forest, um, job sites. A lot of this stuff probably you wouldn't notice, but with a special eye and really accenting its beauty, really like appreciating the tree branch for what it is, I feel like I've shown its beauty in that way. One of the things that immediately strikes me when I walk in here is just this incredibly calming sensation. And I think that comes from when you're in an environment that just has all of these wonderful natural materials and when they're almost left in, a, in kind of an organic state, it's sort of like being in this beautiful forest home, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and not only is it the natural materials, but I feel like I've, I've really intentionally made this sort of a womb space and so really creating this circular feel and also intention and in putting all these little altar pieces everywhere in a certain way to show the sacredness and appreciation for nature and like letting it shine. I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of the work. I'm, I'm actually like finding things to do the work for me. So what about the practical elements of living here? Cooking, storage, all of that sort of thing? Storage, I have a, a separate storage place for tools and backpacking gear. For the stuff that I need 
more accessible. I have um, these shelves where I have like small cooking gear. Like I, I like to have handmade stuff. Um, and then cooking is actually comes out here and it's just a small propane um, cooker. And that's really all I really need. And yeah, over here I have like my mini apothecary where I have all my vitamins and supplements. So, and it's all friction fit so that if I'm driving around it doesn't open. What about a refrigerator for food and stuff? Yeah, this is a small refrigerator. I again upcycled um, and then put tongue and groove cedar on the outside and then I also can slide it out like this and use it as a chair for my desk. I have never seen that done with a fridge before, but that is so <laughs> cool. And that actually looks like such a great workspace as well. Yeah, I made it so it's the right height for me to, to write. I can put my computer here to draw stuff or have a, as a reference guide. It's a kind of a funny thing to use, but a refrigerator works as a chair. Now that plane over there looks like it's got a bit of history. Yeah, actually, this is my great-grandfather's. I come from like a tradition of builders. My dad was a builder. I grew up helping him with carpentry and woodwork, and he gave me this recently. It's a very symbolic thing for me. And I absolutely love this piece here. This is such a unique feature, and when you walk into the house, your eyes just immediately are drawn to that. Yeah, so this was again trying to honor the integrity of the tree. Basically the idea is like a DNA strand connecting nature and humans. Uh, in Buddhism too, there's, there's three levels of consciousness, and so it, it sort of, each shelf sort of represents that to me, just symbolically. That is absolutely beautiful. And these drawers are really cool as well. Are those mushrooms there? Yeah, these are mushrooms that I found. They're reishi mushrooms, and um, they act as handles for the drawers to my dresser. There's also a bunch of storage up here in this loft. Or, or it could be a guest bedroom if you want. <laughs> and so then under that loft, you've got your bed and seating area here, and that yep. just looks so comfortable. Yeah, and actually, because I'm so interested in creating like a womb space, I actually made a certain contraption to make this more like a womb space. It's a pretty simple design, but it basically, the bed hugs you in when you're in there. You can really feel like you're being cradled and really in that comforting environment of, of really being held while you sleep. I have never seen anything like that before. <laughs> I, I have to give it a try. Can, All I, right, can it, I give it a go? Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Oh, that is amazing. Do you feel cradled and hugged? <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in a more comfy bed in my life. <laughs> this is really special. What a cool and clever idea. Being in that bed and being in this space, there really is just something incredibly comforting about the feeling of this home, isn't there? Yeah, because most of my time is out in the woods, so I have the freedom to, to spend time with myself. And when I do come home, it's really to be nourished and comforted and feel safe. And so part of that safety is really having a, a soft environment to rest into. And so there's been studies that even corners or edges naturally put on a part of our brain that shows that there's danger. That like subtle subconscious um, feeling of edges can actually create less of a safe environment. And so by actually curving the environment, not having hardly any corners where energy could get stuck, it, it really creates a, a safe environment for you to, to rest in. What was it that made you want to do a tiny house? Was it just out of necessity when you were being evicted from your old place? Or is this something you've always dreamed of doing? I think it's been a dream and most dreams happen out of a dissatisfaction and so I was dissatisfied with, with spending all this money in this endless vortex towards rent and rather I could start building something that feels like my own, that I could like be a constant art piece that really has my own intention into it. Also my money's not just going down the drain and really settling down and like just being satisfied with having a, a place to sleep, a place to cook and a place to use the bathroom and, and that's really um, all we need a house for and and the rest of the time I would like to be spending really following my passion and and doing things that really benefit the world and not not just working some shitty jobs. And speaking of that, where is the bathroom? Because it's not in here, is it? I mean, it's a pretty simple compost toilet out in the forest. It's, it has like a little nest. And you've got an outdoor shower as well? I either use Caleb's, I also have a, a gym membership where, where there's like a sauna and a steam room, which I 
actually prefer more. There's also something about a space like this that just allows you to weather any storms because it yeah. doesn't matter what happens in your life. You've always got this place to retreat to. Yeah, one thing, actually, there was a forest fire near here. Luckily, it, it didn't make it all the way here, but really, I figured, like, all these houses could have possibly burnt down, and I had the option to just hitch my house on my truck and take it into town, and that freedom is really liberating. When I saw this place from the outside, I was absolutely not expecting anything like this inside. I am so incredibly impressed with what you've actually managed to craft here. And the fact that you've done it in 10 days and with only $1,000 is absolutely remarkable to me. Congratulations yeah. on a spectacular project. Thank well you. done. Yeah, I hope it inspires people that they, they could build a house with a very low budget and really make their dreams come true. There is an undeniable level of creativity and spirituality that's gone into crafting this home. And when you think that all of this has been accomplished from within what is on the outside a relatively unremarkable caravan is absolutely extraordinary to me. When Corwin talks about the idea of crafting a home that's like a womb, that becomes a truly warm and nurturing space, I think there is no question that he's accomplished that in this house. And really, who can ask for more than that?